do it. But according to the Virginia Department of Education competency task list, you must use a fire extinguisher. You've got to be able to use a fire extinguisher. So back at the beginning of the year, let me just quiz you real quick because it's been a long time. There were three classes of fires that we talked about. Does anybody remember the classes? What? ABC. ABC. Easy as ABC. So what was the A for? Remember? Uh, regular, fires. regular fires that are like general trash. Anything that's going to ash. So you have stuff that will ash. Like this is what we're going to be lighting on fire today in the air conditioning unit to simulate this was a gas furnace that we've gutted to simulate a gas fire. Now they do happen. Okay, it's a, it's a bad situation, but like somebody will leave a plug out. I had a situation where a customer told me that they left the plug out of one of the gas valves and then turned on the gas pressure and lit the furnace. And all the gas, instead of going through the burners like it was supposed to, came out of the gas test plug on the gas valve and it just filled up with gas and boom, took the guy's eyebrows right off. Believe it or not, that wasn't me. That was actually one of my parents, uh, students' parents. Uh, had called somebody out for service. So they do happen and you got to be able to react. There's another story that happened up in I think Rhode Island about 15 years ago where they uh, had a club going on and I remember waking up in the middle of the night and seeing a news flash about how like a hundred people died in this club in a fire uh, at a rock concert for a white snake or white lion or one of those con one of those old bands. But what it was was they had a bunch of pyrotechnics in the show and it wasn't supposed to be in that building. And the building had soundproofing up on the top, which was like this foam that was really easy to catch on fire. And then the thing that shocked me was there were three fire extinguishers in that space, but nobody knew where they were, and they were all so concerned with getting out that they ended up trying to run through. You had about 100 people in a room, and they all tried to exit through two double doors at the same time. You know what happened? They all got trampled. They all got trampled. Not only that, not only did they all get trampled, they blocked the front entrance and the back entrance because as they tripped and they collected, collected in the doorway, they started piling up on top of each other. And you know who survived? The guy in the middle of the pile. And he said like one of his legs was sticking out, so he had third degree burns out here, but he listened to the whole thing. He said at first it was like people were scared, and then it turned to panic, and then it turned to something else. And he could just go through the progressions until finally he stopped. He heard people screaming and yelling and moaning. And after about an hour being trapped underneath all those bodies that were burning on top of him, he finally heard people dying and starting to calm down and everything. That's a true story. And that all could have been avoided if they would have known where the fire extinguisher was and how to use it. Now there was a little acronym that we used to use the fire extinguisher. Does anybody remember what it was? It's like what you need to get in the hallway if you want to go use the bathroom. Pass. Yeah. Pull. There's a trigger on the side, a little pin that prevents the trigger from being pulled. Like no matter what, I cannot squeeze that right now because of this pin. So the first P is pull the pin, pull the pin. So, and the first person that pulls this pin today, because there's a test plug, they got to check them to make sure they're filled every month and it's got to be in the green. If it's not in the green, it could be overcharged or undercharged depending on where the needle is, but it's got to be in the green. So the first P is pull the pin. You're going to pull the pin. All right, and then you're gonna aim the nozzle. Usually you aim the nozzle at the base of the fire, but you don't wanna get too close because if it's something that's gonna ash when you pull the trigger and have the uh, propellant come out with the, it pretty much is like baking powder for this one, almost, but that propellant could take the fire then and splatter it, which is something that you wanna consider if you got a B-class fire. What would the B then be for? That's combustible materials like uh, liquids, boil. Think about A is going to ash, B is going to boil. So that's going to be like oil or grease fires. Would you want to add water to a grease fire? No, no. no, because if you add water to the grease fire, it will splatter or it will blevy. It will boiling liquid expanding to vapor explosion. That blevy, the water boils so fast that it just goes right from water to steam and takes the oil with it and usually spreads the fire. So baking soda, if you have a kitchen or grease fire, find the baking soda and pour it out or cover it and smother it. Because if you remove one of the things from the fire triangle, the fuel, the heat, the oxygen, you'll have a fire taken out. And that's what this is going to do. This is going to suffocate the oxygen. And the last one is C for current. What's current? What type of thing are we doing with current? Electrical. Yeah, that's electrical fire. So this one here is good for all three of those. Because again, you would not want a liquid water on a current or electrical fire. All right, that could cause some bad stuff to happen too. So this one here, and then there's actually a class D fire, which is like magnesium. It's a combustible metal. All right, they used to use it back in the western days to blow up safes. Jimmy used to use it, okay? So I'm gonna put this in here like this. I'm gonna light it off, okay, with the torch, and then you're gonna have to come out. Now look, the first thing you do is you alert people that there's a fire. So you say, fire, fire. 
and then you pull the pin. A, that's the P. A, aim the base. Squeeze the trigger, and then if you need to, you can sweep the area. Pass. Pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. All right, so who's going to go first? Who wants to be the first one? Sebastian? All right, so remember, you're going to come up, and you're going to yell, fire, fire. Let me have your paper towels. I'm going to put your paper towels in here. We're going to light them on fire, and then you're going to put it out. Yeah, strange light and fires today. All right, what a, what a lovely class. All right, what you gotta do? Fire. Pull that pin. Fire, you gotta fire. pull hard. Aim that. Squeeze and sweep. That's it, done. Now, you would continue to do it until the fire's out, and this is the powder that we're talking about. Fire is a deadly destructive force. Fire-related property loss last year alone was estimated at $11 billion. The best way for the average person to be safe from fire is to prevent it from happening in the first place. However, in certain situations, a fire extinguisher can help you limit the damage a fire might cause by putting it out before it has a chance to grow out of control. Fire extinguishers are your first defense against fire. Before we talk in detail about fire extinguishers, let's talk about fire itself. You can think of fire as a three-part chemical reaction or a triangle. The base of the triangle is fuel. Fires need some material to burn. One side of the triangle is heat. All fire is hot. The other side of the triangle is oxygen. Without oxygen, fire goes out. Fire extinguishers put fires out by taking one of the three parts out of the mix and interrupting the chemical reaction. Fire is very fast. In only 30 seconds, a small fire can grow completely out of control and engulf a room. Room temperature in a fire can be 100 degrees at the floor and up to 600 degrees at eye level. The best way to survive a fire is to have working smoke alarms and a quick, safe escape route. Knowing when and how to use a fire extinguisher is a matter of life and death. If you choose the wrong extinguisher or use it in the wrong circumstances, you could make a small fire worse and you could be injured or even killed. No two fires are just alike. Fires burn, spread, and are extinguished depending on what is burning. Fires are separated into classes depending on what is burning. And fire extinguishers are designed to put out only a certain class or classes of fire. The classes of fire are A, B, C, D, and K. Class A fires are those in materials like wood, paper, trash, cloth, and other ordinary combustibles. These fires can be extinguished by either air pressured water or dry chemical extinguishers. Class A extinguishers are labeled with the letter A inside a triangle and or a picture of burning trash. Class B fires are fires of flammable liquids like oil, grease, gasoline, kerosene, and acetone. Using water on a Class B fire can spread the fire to a larger area, causing more damage or even injury. Class B fires can be extinguished by either dry chemical extinguishers or carbon dioxide extinguishers. Class B extinguishers are labeled with the letter B inside a square and or a picture of a burning gas can. Class C is the category for electrical fires, such as those in appliances or at electrical outlets. These fires can be extinguished by either dry chemical extinguishers or carbon dioxide extinguishers. Class C extinguishers are labeled with the letter C inside a circle and or a picture of a burning electrical plug. Most homes are best protected by multi-purpose fire extinguishers. These extinguishers are called dry chemical extinguishers. 
Dry chemical extinguishers work by separating the fuel element of the fire from its oxygen supply. The agent inside the extinguisher coats the fuel with a thin layer of dust. It not only separates the fuel from the oxygen in the air, but it also interrupts the chemical reaction of fire. Multipurpose dry chemical extinguishers are also called ABC extinguishers because they put out class A, B, and C fires. These extinguishers are safe for use on ordinary combustible fires, like furniture or papers, on fires of flammable liquids like grease or nail polish remover, and on fires in electrical equipment. They are labeled with the A, B, and C emblems and or the pictures associated with each type. In addition to the letter and picture symbols, fire extinguisher labels have numbers on them that tell the size of the fire the extinguisher can handle. The number with the letter A tells how much water or other extinguishing agent it holds. The number with the letter B tells approximately how many square feet of a flammable liquid fire the extinguisher will put out. The larger these two numbers are, the larger the fires they can be expected to put out. There is no number associated with the C on a label. The fourth class of fire is Class D. These fires are those in combustible metals, such as magnesium, titanium, potassium, sodium, and others. Class D extinguishers are necessary in laboratories and industrial areas where these metals are found. The metals burn at extremely high temperatures and react violently with water, air, and certain chemicals. Class D extinguishers are labeled with the letter D inside a star. Class K fires are fires in restaurant kitchens. In recent years, the restaurant industry has begun to use vegetable oils in their deep fat fryers. Class K extinguishers were developed to deal with these hotter oil fires in restaurant settings. It's important to understand the classes of fires for two reasons. First, to make certain you purchase the type of extinguisher you're most likely to need. And second, to make certain before you try to put out a fire that you have the right fire extinguisher at hand. If you do not know for sure what is burning, do not even try to extinguish a fire. Exit immediately and call the fire department from a neighboring home or business. Fire extinguishers are great tools for limiting the damage a fire can do if they are used under the right conditions. If you think you can fight a fire safely, go ahead and give the extinguisher a try. Here's what has to happen. First, call the fire department at 911 or tell someone else to do it. If you are at work, pull a fire alarm too. Only try to fight a fire that is small and contained. If the fire is spreading, leave the area immediately. Also try to use an extinguisher that is easy to reach and in working order. That is, it is fully charged. Also make sure the extinguisher is large enough to put out the fire within 8 to 10 seconds. That's how long you'll have, because most extinguishers completely discharge their extinguishing agent in under 10 seconds. Most portable fire extinguishers are fairly straightforward to operate. But if you don't know how to use the extinguisher you have, the time of the fire is not the time to learn. Only attempt to use an extinguisher you are familiar with. Don't start fighting the fire until everyone else has left the area or is leaving. Before you try to fight a fire, position yourself between the fire and an easy to reach exit. The exit should be at your back as you face the fire. Don't hesitate to quit if conditions change. If smoke fills the room, drop the extinguisher, get on your hands and knees, cover your nose and mouth with your shirt, and crawl to the exit. The indispensable key to fighting fires safely is knowing how to use the extinguisher. If you're not very comfortable with operating instructions, don't even try to use the extinguisher. Different extinguishers have slightly different operations, but they are similar. Here are a few simple steps that apply to most extinguishers. Just remember, pass. PASS is a memory device for the four basic steps of fire extinguisher use. P, pull the pin. A pin or latch locks the operating lever. Pull the pin or latch to free the lever. Stand six to eight feet away from the fire. A, 
Aim the extinguisher's nozzle or hose low at the base of the fire. S. Squeeze the lever that operates the extinguisher. The extinguishing agent will immediately begin to discharge. S. Sweep from side to side. The fire seems to be going out. Move carefully toward it as you continue to sweep side to side. Even after the fire appears to be out, keep an eye on the site until the fire department arrives. Firefighters should examine the site of any fire to be certain that it is completely out. At home, you should have a fire extinguisher in the kitchen, the basement, the garage, and the workshop. Also, it's a good idea to have one near the bedrooms and the living room, especially if any smokers live in the home, or if you use wood stoves or space heaters for heat. In your home, install fire extinguishers three to five feet off the ground, where adults can easily see and reach them. Teach kids that extinguishers are not toys and are not to be touched. If you use a bracket to hang your extinguisher, make sure the bracket is easy to open. A stable shelf or alcove is a good location. Never hide your extinguishers in a closet or cupboard. Store all extinguishers away from heat sources. Install extinguishers near the exits and between any likely source of fire and the exit. If you work in an office or other low fire risk setting, fire extinguishers are installed much as they are at home. They should be placed in kitchens, near machinery, and in hallways. In most communities, workplace fire extinguishers are subject to regulation. Your local fire department will be happy to assist you in selecting and installing fire extinguishers in your workplace. Fire extinguishers are generally easy to maintain. Make sure any moving parts are dust and corrosion free. Check extinguishers monthly to see that they are charged and full. Most ABC extinguishers are disposable and must be discarded after use. If their gauges show empty, they must be replaced. Rechargeable units must be recharged if their gauges indicate low charge. Most of us hope that if we found a fire burning, we could save the day by putting it out. But putting out a fire is not as simple as it seems. Fire is a major killer. It is hotter, faster, and more uncontrollable than many people think. At the same time, a knowledgeable adult with a working fire extinguisher can put out some small, containable fires. In the case of a fire, evacuate the building, call the fire department, or have someone else call, from a neighboring house or business, and then assess whether a small blaze can be put out with a fire extinguisher. Preparation and knowledge can make fire extinguishers your first defense against fire. One more thing to consider when you use a portable fire extinguisher is its size. A relatively small portable fire extinguisher, like this dry chemical extinguisher designated as a 5ABC, will only last about 6 to 10 seconds before empty. A larger extinguisher, like a 20ABC, will last somewhere around 25 to 35 seconds before it is emptied. While that is certainly a longer time, most people are surprised at how fast even a large fire extinguisher can be completely emptied. There are four basic steps to use most portable fire extinguishers. However, people often panic when they see a fire and forget exactly what to do. To help you remember the four basic steps a fire extinguisher use, just remember P-A-S-S -S, or PASS. The P stands for pull the pin. Stand several feet back from the fire while holding the extinguisher in one hand and then insert your finger into the round end of the retainer pin and firmly pull. And don't worry, the thin plastic band that holds the retainer pin in place on most extinguishers will break relatively easy. The second step is to aim the nozzle or discharge hose at the base of the fire. The idea is to apply the fire extinguishing media towards the material that is burning and not at the flames that may be leaping up high. Step 3 is to squeeze the handle to discharge the fire extinguisher. If you let go of the handle, the discharge will stop and if you squeeze it again, it will resume. 
The fourth and final step is to sweep from side to side as you slowly approach the fire. This allows you to cover all of the burning material and not just that located at the center of the fire. Here's a quick explanation of the five most common types of fire extinguisher and their uses. Water and water with additive fire extinguishers are all colour coded red on the extinguisher description panel. Basic instructions on how to operate them are printed on the canister. You should only use them on flammable solids like wood, paper, textiles and furnishings. It can be very dangerous to use them on other types of fire. Carbon dioxide or CO2 fire extinguishers are colour coded black on the extinguisher description panel and operating instructions can be found on the canister. Although carbon dioxide extinguishers are primarily for use on flammable liquid fires like petrol, oils and petroleum based spirits, we also recommend them for fires in electrical and electronic equipment as a CO2 gas won't damage your computer or gadgetry. As the gas discharge is extremely cold Avoid handling the special discharge horn when using. Foam fire extinguishers are colour coded cream on the identification panel and again carry basic operating instructions. Larger sizes normally have an extension hose and low pressure nozzle. They are intended for use on flammable liquids like petrol, oils and solvents. As they are water based they also extinguish flammable solids like wood, paper and textiles. Dry powder fire extinguishers are colour coded blue and are available in a wide choice of sizes and are very versatile. You can use them on fires involving flammable solids, flammable liquids and also flammable gases such as propane and butane. They also work on fires caused by electrical equipment but unlike CO2 the powder congeals under heat so can leave a sticky residue. Last but not least, wet chemical fire extinguishers are colour coded yellow on the identification panel. They contain a special chemical formulation that reacts with cooking fat and cooking oil fires to extinguish the fire, so are a must for the commercial kitchen. You can now buy special foam formulations that are effective on cooking fat fires in smaller canisters for home use. Our 600ml aerosol ABF extinguisher is also effective on solid combustibles and flammable liquids so is a useful safeguard to have around the home. And remember, when it comes to your safety, come to fireandsafetycentre.co.uk.